So in this video, we're going to show you how to connect to Solar Assistant. We have a new model that's just arrived. It's called the Solar Assistant Orange. Here is the old model. And let me zoom in a bit there over there. Our Watts 24 7 model. And we've got the two LV6548s. And we have a new little surprise over here, which we're going to show you how that, uh, how that works with the new Raspberry Pi. So we're going to start off first by turning our inverters off, as you can see. We don't have the power supplies connected over there, so I'm going to turn the inverters off. All right, and we shut the solar down inside the combiner boxes. And we'll do the same over there. One set of combiner boxes goes to one inverter, the other one to the other. I'm going to shut the solar off, and then in a short while, these guys are going to turn off. Now, Solar Assistant works with anything, just about. It works with almost any battery. Um, <clears throat> I'll go through the batteries as well in this video. And uh, MPP Solar, Sol Arc, uh, you name it. It's a little Raspberry Pi unit, um, which comes preloaded with software inside, <clears throat> directly from us. It also has a little power supply that you'll notice. It goes from uh, 60 volts, from 11 volts to 60 volts, and it puts out 5 volts supply into there. You could use a phone charger too if you needed to. Uh, this just allows us to connect any, any battery voltage from 12 volts through to uh, 60 volts, which we have over here today, where we're going to show you how that connects up. So here's our breaker from our 48 volts that goes to our LV6548. If we had to connect solar assistant in there, then it will stay on uh, regardless if the breaker was on or off. But if we stuck it on over there, which goes to the inverters, then it'll turn on and off when the inverter power gets shut on and off. So we are opting to stick it on the top there. So we're going to turn this breaker off right now. We're going to take these two Allen keys out. Then we're going to stick it between red and black, obviously, positive, negative. And that, our little ring terminals from our power supply are going to go straight in there, red, red and black. And that's what we're going to do. You don't need to show you all those details. That's pretty, pretty simple. All right, so I've connected my power supply in there inside the allen keys use the rings and so solar assistant is like the monitoring system on steroids yes these these guys come with wi-fi built in um it's not great <clears throat> yes the grow what wi-fi module too anybody that's known about that it's not it works but it's not that great it actually has a five minute interval before it uploads data to the cloud and without internet access you pretty much screwed with with data solar assistant takes one sample every second and stores it locally so you don't need internet access you can do if you want to you, you can connect to it via bluetooth or via internet and um, you can even connect to it via its own wi-fi if you're living out in the sticks and you don't have wi-fi access <clears throat> or internet access you can just leave it as it is it'll transmit its own wi-fi signal you can connect to it from your phone and view uh, previous months or years activity or even today's activity in live, uh, live mode. So the older Raspberry Pi also had a HDMI port, but <clears throat> it's a feature request that only the Orange uh, Pi can do. We've uh, asked that it had an included website built into the unit so that we can actually use the HDMI port. These previous models, you could put your uh, monitor in there and you could watch the guy booting up, but there was no, no status at all. So we're going to fire this up for the first time. We're going to kick our inverters on. It's going to get a, bit, a little bit more noisy with these fans kicking on. And this little guy is going to take a few seconds to boot up. While it's booting up, let me tell you a little bit about it. I went to Walmart and got a mouse and a keyboard over there. That's for 20 bucks. And it uses a single port on the USB. Look, these ports are a little bit limited. We've only got three ports on this unit. We can either connect via Wi-Fi, like I said, or via uh, Ethernet. So we've used up two of these ports already, and we've got two inverters, and you might want to connect batteries, etc. So then we also have a Wi-Fi uh, a USB hub. So we have a USB hub over here we also have on our website. And uh, this comes with a 5-volt power supply. It comes with two USB cables, which I've taken out, USB-C cables, USB-A to USB-C, the power supply, and your four USB ports. So your USB from one of the Pi's would go in here, and you'd have four USB-powered ports coming out there. So you can connect to 
multiple inverters. You can daisy chain these guys as well as have as many USB ports as you like. Connecting to multiple inverters on this in, in parallel with each other or multiple different types of batteries too if you want to. So that's our shop Wi-Fi over there and you'll notice a few other goodies around here. But what comes up is we've just got this unit powered on, nothing else connected to it. It's booted up. And there we have Solar Assistant. So we just connect to its hotspot over there. Put in the password, which is Solar123. Okay, put in the password Solar123. And join. And then it'll connect, but it'll tell you it does not have internet access. Okay, so it's connected. Now all we do is we go to our browser. We go to our web browser, type in IP address 10.0.0.5 and push enter, push go. And there we have it straight away. In fact, the screen that'll come up, first of all, we've started this up already, is you go to the configuration screen, which is right over there. And it'll say it's unregistered, unregistered. You can put in, if your Wi-Fi address in there, uh, we'll show you how to do that. You put your Wi-Fi SSID and your Wi-Fi password in there. It will connect. If it does not connect to your Wi-Fi, it will retransmit Solar Assistant uh, SSID. <clears throat> but you don't need to configure anything right now to make it work. All right, We're really just connecting with our phone. All we've got to do is let's connect it up to an inverter. And um, let's show you how that goes. I'm going to start up the inverters. Now you'll notice on the LV6548s, LV6048s, etc., etc., et, cetera, et cetera, or any of the clones out there, you'll find it's got a lithium-ion RJ45 port and a connect-to-computer port. And it's an RJ45 port, but it's actually a serial port. And Solar Assistant has these awesome uh, USB to RS-332 adapters. And we sell them on our website as well. Uh, well you could use other ones too. Uh, you can find cheaper models on Amazon, and that's got the RJ45 plug on them. But we do find that the other models give a lot of noise, and I actually have some over here that we've been using on our old system. So that's our old inverter, and we find sometimes that noisy signals. The reason we found that out was connecting to batteries sometimes, and sometimes it would connect, and other times it wouldn't, and it would show error codes. And then we found that these little cables, these USB to uh, RS-232 adapters, depending how cheap they are, I think these were like five bucks or so on eBay. And uh, this is the cable that comes with the MPP solar inverter. It's got the DB9 pin over there to the RJ45 plug. And let me just take that out. So that just pretty much converts USB uh, into RS-232. But this solar assistant cable is all in one, does away with all of that junk. And um, so these are the ones we recommend. A little bit pricey, but um, the money I think is well worth spent. There is another option as well in these MPP solar inverters or vice versa, is um, also if you just got the USB, micro USB port. Now, the problem with this is, You'll notice at the bottom of the inverter, it's got this tiny little port over here, but they're pretty flimsy. We've had many, many customers actually break this port. In fact, this one doesn't even have that port in anymore because that little port actually got disconnected by plugging in and plugging out a few times. So I don't recommend it. If you plug it in one time and leave it, maybe, but I prefer using the RS-232 port over there. So that's what we're going to do. So we just plug the first cable in there. That was that over there, Solar Assistant, MPP Solar RS-232. We also have the RS-485 ports as well for um, some of the Solar Arc and all other types of connections that you want. If you want to connect to the battery via RS-485, we have RS-485 as well. So this is going to use up one of the USB ports. Okay, so now we've just used up two of the available three ports for our two inverters, and we're going to turn on. Notice we've done nothing else. We haven't connected to the internet nothing okay so now we're going to turn our inverters on going to get more noisy now so i'm going to have to speak a bit louder excuse all of this in the back here this is all my battery displays you don't need all that stuff and we're going to show you next on the phone what happens all right so all we've done is connected that up 
the and we haven't done anything to this um, app over here. We've just gone back to our IP address 10.0.0.5 and we just say the inverted type and we use MPP or Voltronic Expert and there it's already detected the USB ports and we're going to select them both because I've got two on here right now and then we close that off excuse the glare in the background and then we we can also add a battery now but we're going to show that later and then we simply click connect or save first rather save first and then connect and you'll see it says connecting and connected so right now we haven't even registered like I've shown and I'm gonna move uh, let me scroll up to the top and then right over here I'm gonna make this a bit easier we can see exactly what's going on straight away without anything All right there's the power coming out the battery there's the load and then we can even see the solar PV coming in right now we haven't even turned the solar on okay so we can see the load power etc let's keep on recording over here while I turn on the unit and then you see PV power is zero so I'm going to turn the breakers on and then within a few seconds it takes a while to detect the solar and there you see there's already PV voltage has come up on one and the other PV voltage there and that's how many watts we're pulling and there's the total wattage over there super cool super super cool then you can see PV2 started to come alive there as well and there's all the details you ever wanted now that's all done in graphs as well and so we're going to move now to the next part of this exciting model we went to Walmart and bought ourselves a cheap monitor for under 100 bucks and we're simply going to take the HDMI port over there bought HDMI cable just plug that in for me would you on the side and hopefully everything moves and we also connected the mouse and the keyboard now because we simply plugged in the USB or the HDMI cable in while the unit had already booted up uh, I'm suspecting because we had this thing going just a second ago I'm going to pull out the 5 volt power and plug it back in so now if you're doing this via your phone you you wouldn't need the keyboard and mouse obviously because that's part of your phone on the touch screen all right oh, it's 247 you put in your password for your Wi-Fi you click submit if it's if it's successful the um, your unit will disconnect from your phone and it'll, the, it will now be available on your local network or on the internet also you go and register your site and you'll get a default domain name and this is the domain name you'd be able to use anywhere in the world to connect to your system so there's the one way of connecting your inverter up or your uh, raspberry pi solar assistant to the battery is via the usb or rs232 cable whichever the port is uh, directly to the unit or we can connect the communications cable from the inverter up which is the preferred way to the battery and then uh, pull the specs from the inverter about the battery and that's the method i prefer if possible and that's what we're going to do next so i got my network cable or my rj45 cable plug it into the bms port over there then i'm going to turn my inverters on okay this particular model inverter uses protocol or this model battery uses uh, a different protocol to the others and we go to that to setting number five in this case and the battery type over here I've got set to use and in this case you normally get to set it to PYL over here for uh, SOK and PITES batteries etc but in this case on this particular model we're going to set it to LRB because that's what it likes best so now on Solar Assistant in this case, we go to Configuration and we're going to scroll down to where it says Battery and we've tried some other drop down box over there. Disconnect. We're going to use Use Inverter Values right on top. All right, click Save and Connect. 
great. So now we could scroll up to the top and click on uh, dashboard. And then if we click on the battery, we can read the battery percentage. And that comes straight off the battery BMS communications. And there are the statistics directly from the batteries, 100% charged. And there's some more battery specs right there. And you'll notice because the icon is flashing, it means the BMS communication to the inverter is working. So um, Solar Assistant now, especially with the orange version, with the HDMI output, is quite awesome. You can leave this monitor downstairs by your system or a long HDMI cable or whatever you want. Uh, anywhere in the house and uh, solar assistant now especially with the orange version with the HDMI output is quite awesome you can leave this monitor downstairs by your system or a long HDMI cable or whatever you want uh, anywhere in the house and um, just plug it into the HDMI port and off you go if you don't want to have this monitor if you bought the older model you can just get an Android tablet or a Windows tablet PC somewhere cheap off Walmart or so, stick it up on the wall, let it connect directly to your Raspberry Pi, and you have the, exactly the same experience anywhere in the world or in your house. Thanks for watching.